U.S. intelligence agencies have concluded Hamas cannot be destroyed, a core aim of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's merciless onslaught in Gaza. So why is the U.S. continuing to arm Israel to fight a war it doesn't believe can be won? This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm James Bays. Israel will face armed resistance from Hamas for years and the group's vast tunnel network in Gaza won't be destroyed. In addition, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, whose viability as a leader is in jeopardy, as is his far-right coalition government, not the comments of Hamas, Palestinians or opponents of Israel, but instead the view of the US intelligence services. The war Netanyahu has unleashed since the Hamas attack on October the 7th has killed and maimed more than 100,000 Palestinians and destroyed vast swathes of Gaza. Yet Hamas and its allies continue to fight back. So if the intelligence community of Israel's closest ally doesn't believe in the core aims of the military offensive, why is the US still providing it with money and weapons? And with its predictions that Netanyahu's governments could collapse, what does this report indicate about the current state of US-Israeli relations? We'll discuss all of this with our panel of guests shortly. But first, Imogen Kimber has more details on what's in the report. Israel will not destroy Hamas. That's according to a US intelligent assessment of global threats. It states Israel will probably face lingering arm resistance from Hamas for years to come and the military will struggle to destroy its network of underground tunnels in Gaza. It's likely not what Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu wants to hear. He has repeatedly stated the total elimination of the group is his ultimate aim. To win this war, we must destroy the remaining Hamas battalions in Rafah. If not, if not, Hamas will regroup rearm and reconquer Gaza and then we're back to square one. But Netanyahu's premiership isn't secure either. The report predicts major protests demanding his resignation and new elections, with the possibility of a more moderate government taking power. But where Netanyahu and US intelligence officials may agree is that Israel's war on Gaza threatens to become a broader regional conflict. Now, having lasted for more than five months, the Gaza conflict has roiled the Middle East with renewed instability, presenting new security paradigms and humanitarian challenges while pulling in a range of actors. The conflict has prompted new dynamics, even as it has entrenched old ones. And it risks increasing economic fragility, even in countries not directly involved, curbing tourism in Jordan and Egypt, for example, as well as globally. In solidarity with Hamas, Yemen's Houthis are attacking ships in the Red Sea, a major maritime thoroughfare, causing disruptions to deliveries and costs worldwide. The involvement of the Houthis, which are backed by Iran, underscores the potential for a widening conflict. US forces in the region have also been targeted, although the report concludes Tehran did not have prior knowledge of Hamas's October the 7th attack on Israel. As relations between Netanyahu and Joe Biden become increasingly strained, the damning assessment of the Israeli Prime Minister may make things worse. The crisis has galvanized violence by a range of actors around the world, and while it is too early to tell, it is likely that the Gaza conflict will have a generational impact on terrorism. But for the people of Gaza, the war has already had a devastating impact. Imogen Kimber, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Let's bring in our panel of guests to discuss this further. In Boston, Glenn Carl served for more than 20 years in the clandestine services of the CIA and is now a U.S. national security and foreign policy specialist. In London, Yossi Meckelberg is an associate fellow with the Middle East and North Africa program at the U.K. think tank Chatham House. And here in Doha, Tamar Kamut is the assistant professor of public policy at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. He specialises in conflict resolution and international aid. A real team of experts. Thank you and welcome to the programme. Well, this 
is the report that we're going to be talking about, and I'd like to read what I think is one of the key quotes from it. Israel will probably face lingering armed resistance from Hamas for years to come, and the military will struggle to neutralise Hamas's underground infrastructure, which allows insurgents to hide, regain strength and surprise Israeli forces. Tamar, what is your reaction to that, not just as a specialist in the field, but as a Palestinian who comes from Gaza? Uh, James, uh, uh, I think we, we're starting to hear some logic and some sense coming from, from, from the Americans. And, uh, and, and, let, and, and let's explain why. I mean, if you look at Hamas, uh, Hamas emerged as a resistance uh, military movement inside Palestine under Israeli occupation, under, uh, under direct Israeli occupation, uh, when Israel was in full control of the Gaza Strip. Uh, and even when the when when the when the peace process took off in 1994, and then we had Oslo, Israel still kept 40 percent of the Gaza Strip in terms of uh, like they kept so many settlements, cutting the strip into three pieces of land, and also they had full control of the borders, security-wise. And Hamas was still operating and growing under this context, so it was. Hamas emerged under direct Israeli occupation. So the idea of reoccupying the Gaza Strip again and sitting there, yeah, of course, Israel is, is capable of demolishing Hamas's military capabilities on a, long, uh, on a long term, but it can never end Hamas as an ideology, as an idea, as a resistance movement. It will keep re-emerging again and again because it, it failed to do this in the past. So this leads us to the only path forward. The only path is peace, is, set, set, is, is going forward for peace. The PLO was a, was a stunt enemy for Israel, and they reached, with, uh, they reached for peace with the PLO. Hamas is there. It's not going to go anywhere, because it's a mainstream political Palestinian party. It's an idea. It's an ideology. And Hamas's presence in this context is an outcome of the continued Israeli occupation. And the only way for Israel to end, for this war to end, is to reach peace, not with, with the Palestinian Authority or the PLO, and with Hamas as well. And I think after this war, there is a window of opportunity if there is an international will, especially by the Americans. Meaning Hamas also, from a pragmatic perspective, have realized that this war has costed a lot, and it brought lots of damage. Of, 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 of devastation, uh, the devastation of murder, of, of mass killing to the Palestinians. Hamas also is not in an easy position. So I think in these moments, critical moments, where the Israelis realize, with the Americans' help, rational thinking that they cannot get rid of Hamas, and Hamas also realizing with its military tactics it cannot defeat Israel and continue with this uh, tactics of war, then th maybe that's the time of opportunity for the Americans to intervene, for the international community to, to, to intervene, once and forever and end this war, bring peace. OK, Tamar, let, let's bring in Glenn um, with that point that you just raised there. It's time for the US to uh, support the idea of a ceasefire. The US, the only country around uh, the UN Security Council table by using its veto that's preventing that ceasefire, uh, Glenn. If Hamas can't be destroyed, if that goal is unattainable, why is the US administration t still allowing Israel to pummel Gaza? Well, the working title of uh, my book, which was about uh, terror, terrorism, the quote, War on Terror, uh, a number of years ago, was Victims of Delusion. Uh, that title was changed for secondary reasons, but uh, the, the title is apt. The intelligence community has the easier job in creating in the process of government, and, and that job is, uh, the expression you will, you will have heard, is to speak truth to power. So it's not a, a, uh, a discovery or a change in the assessment of the intelligence community in the United States to say that a conventional military attack on an ideology or a, a political idea or a cultural viewpoint um, can, cannot succeed. Uh, however, uh, the intelligence community does not make policy. And there are uh, significant elements uh, in the power structure, in the government, in the political process, uh, that uh, simply don't believe that uh, conventional military uh, methods are almost irrelevant or actually make matters worse when dealing with a fundamentally political and uh, cultural uh, issue. And so that's why, broadly speaking, uh, the truth is almost irrelevant 
where the facts are almost irrelevant to um, the power struggles uh, to support uh, convictions that are, are not based on fact. But, 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 Glenn, on that, I mean, we, we get this public intelligence, this report that we've just seen, but these are the same intelligence agencies that are feeding information to these senior U.S. leaders every single day. The U.S. president gets something called the presidential daily brief. President Biden, will he not? He'll have been told this for weeks, months, maybe since October the 7th. Oh, I'm, well, not just since October the 7th, but how about for the last uh, 50 years? Uh, I think that is true. And, I'm, and I, I do not know Biden uh, personally. I didn't uh, work under him or meet with him. But uh, I will uh, bet my uh, retirement uh, on the fact that uh, he assesses, understands the uh, presentations and assesses uh, the uh, realities on the ground in Gaza in the same way. Uh, he has slowly been trying to increase uh, pressure, as periodically happens in the U.S. system, on Israel. But the fact is that the Likud party and the right wing of the Likud party, the ultra-Orthodox parties that are um, aggressively pursuing uh, settlements in the West Bank, uh, drive uh, the policy. Now, I do not mean to imply uh, what people uh, often believe, which is that there's some sort of dark uh, cabal uh, or Jewish lobby uh, making the decisions, but the political di in the United States, but the political dynamics are such that uh, it is uh, difficult for the Republicans in particular, uh, but the American political system to uh, pressure Israel so much that they would uh, implement policies that everyone recognizes as uh, necessary or fact-based. Yossi, let me bring you in, and, uh, of course, we want to know your view of the Israeli perspective as someone who analyses the Israeli position closely. If we go back to the 11th of October, the Minister of Defence, Yoav Gallant, and we've got so many quotes I could choose like this one, we will wipe this thing called Hamas, ISIS, Gaza, off the face of the earth. It will cease to exist. You've heard what Tamar says, you cannot defeat an idea. Do you think the senior Israeli, War Cabinet and others, do believe they can destroy Hamas completely? Well, there are two options. Either it's, uh, it, this is for pub, public consumption, domestic public consumption, or they are delusional. And this, you know, neither, neither serves the Israeli, the Israeli interest, the, the, definitely not the Palestinian interest, and nor the American interest in, in this case, and, and, hence, hence the, the, the assessment. I think the reaction, and one can understand the anger after October 7, but government should have policies, should have strategy. And instead of it, they act more as, you know, with rage and, 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 and almost driven by, by, by revenge, instead of thinking straight what is achievable. And I think to the point of time, the most important thing from Israel's point of view, if they want to defeat Hamas, it's actually to make it politically and ideological irrelevant and, prove, and suggest and offer the Palestinian an alternative, as was offered earlier, a, a peaceful solution, a two-state solution, something that creates hope for Palestinian. But by, by killing more than 30,000 Palestinians in, in Gaza, most of them are, are civilians, children as well, this is not something that will separate between Hamas and, 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 the, and the rest of the, of, the, of the Palestinians. And as we saw, there is an increase in support in, in Hamas. And I think Israel, maybe it's too late for this government to reassess its aims, which calls for a new government that actually can look at the day after the war and try to rebuild relations with, with the Palestinians, which not based on a zero-sum game, which is not based on a, the old security paradigm that okay, Yossi, all together I, 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 get, I get all those comments you've made there, and you're focusing on the current Israeli government, but the report also says the Israeli population broadly supports the destruction of Hamas. So if the Biden administration is hope, hoping that Netanyahu will decide to bring the war to an end someday very soon just by himself, with that backdrop, with the Israeli population that supports the destruction of Hamas and doesn't um, s support a two-state solution, that's not going to happen anytime soon, is it? I, I think we need to separate between the issue of supporting two-state solution and the, the destruction of Hamas. 
I think this is, again, this is a, a reaction to October 7. But if the Israeli population, I mean, the critical mass within the Israeli population would offer an alternative, a peaceful alternative, then you'll see shift in Israeli uh, public, public opinion. We saw it 30 years ago. There were times that no one wanted to speak to the PLO in Israel, and it was regarded as a terrorist organization, and Oslo changed it. Unfortunately, it didn't reach its ultimate conclusion of, of peace. So I think we need to enter into a political process. Polit public opinion can change if there are changing of circumstances from war to peace. But for this, you need new leadership. You need a new discourse within the society. And then I believe there will see also public opinion that is more susceptible to a peace uh, discourse. Well, the way this report works that we're discussing, it comes out every year, and this report then is debated in the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, and the intelligence chiefs have to answer questions in that Senate Intelligence Committee, and there were pretty um, striking exchanges in that committee. Listen to these questions asked by the Senator Tom Cotton, a Republican senator, ex-military officer uh, who uh, served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Listen to the questions he asked. Is Israel exterminating the Palestinian people? Um, Senator, all I can say is, you know, what I said before. So is that a no, you do not believe Israel is exterminating the Palestinian people? No, I, I, think, I think Israel's, I understand Israel's need. Director Haynes, do you believe Israel is exterminating the Palestinian people? I really don't have anything to add to what Director Burns has said. So, Tama. Your reaction to that? They're, they were open about some things, but not about others, weren't they? It's it's so it's so disappointing, James. I mean, I mean, for them not to have a clear answer on this, and uh, I mean, um, the, the the U.S.'s conduct in this war is has been more or less. I mean, we understand the the, the uh, how big was 7 on the seventh uh, of October as an event on the Israeli society. Uh, we understand the anger, the revenge as well, but nothing justifies, nothing justifies this genocidal war. Nothing. I mean, the way it's being conducted, uh, deliberate targeting of civilians. Uh, it's, it's. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a war that has been aired on TV. A genocidal war. We can, we are, we're watching on daily basis. And I think, I think it, it's. I mean, and also strategically, we understand that the U.S. has tried to shoulder Israel at the beginning contain it, walk with it step by step. But enough. I mean, this should stop now, because this has gone too far. And back to the report, I mean, I mean, I hope if there is one wishful thinking behind this report now and the timing of it is that for the U.S. also to tame Israel and make it understand that it's time to end this. You cannot, that Israel cannot continue its conduct uh, as it's, it has been going on so far. Let me remind your viewers some of or your viewers of something, uh, James. Uh, when 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 Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip in 2005, and then we had the Palestinian elections, and then the, the complexities around, and then Hamas took over. You have an entire generation from 2006 till 2024 who are who don't who, who have never seen Israelis or or uh, interacted with Israelis. I mean, and now suddenly they wake up and they see boots on the grounds, Israeli soldiers. An entire young Palestinian generation now see soldiers in their houses, in checkpoints, in hospitals, destroying every element of their lives. And this is horrifying for them. It's not in the end of the story. Now, so what, what, what for us Palestinians, what really matters now is this realization that, yes, I mean, even myself as a Palestinian, there is a huge debate on the issue of resistance. What's a rational resistance? What's a legit resistance? What's a dignified human resistance? Not all Palestinians agree with Hamas. Not all Palestinians agree with Fatah as well. But you cannot collectively punish an entire nation the way Israel is doing or has done in Gaza. And the international community is silent. And the U.S. is complicit with this war. OK, let me, let, me, let, me, let me bring in Glenn now. We heard that clip uh, from the Senate Intelligence Committee. This is the report. I think it's worth getting some context for you, because you worked for 33 years in the CIA. You worked in the field around the world, doing secret stuff I'm sure you can't tell us about. But you also prepared previous versions of this report. This isn't just some snippet of intelligence information. This is the key report, is it not? 
Yes, it accurately reflects the consensus. Now, there will always be varying opinions and nuances, um, but it gives the consensus of the intelligence community. So uh, a lowest common denominator sometimes, well, inevitably will miss certain nuance. Um, however, the question that we heard was unsurprisingly um, political and objective and um, malicious, uh, frankly, because it made a binary issue out of a, a terrible uh, complex uh, situation. Uh, the uh, director of the uh, DNI and of the CIA couldn't really say uh, in a setting uh, that in a in a hearing that there are um, elements in the Israeli government that uh, on the far right, the ones I alluded to before, who would probably be very happy and may actively be seeking to um, reoccupy, in fact, they said it uh, explicitly, reoccupy uh, Gaza and uh, expel all the Palestinians. But, but that's Glenn, a minority. Glenn, in terms of the uh, sort of information. the Israeli government. Yeah, Glenn, in terms of the sort of information that they will be transmitting to US uh, leaders, intelligence information that they don't make public, there'll be all sorts of questions they can answer that we have suspicions about. They'll, they'll be able to talk about Israeli targeting and whether they're really targeting civilian targets as so many people, including uh, rulings by the International Court of Justice, um, are, are making clear. Um, these sort of, this sort of, President Biden is, can't say he doesn't know what's going on, can he? That's a hard one to answer. If, if there are reports that the United States uh, obtains of whatever uh, origin uh, that are considered reliable, that the Israeli government uh, were or is uh, targeting the civilians, I'm confident that that would be made uh, public. Uh, that That's a factual issue, less subject to uh, political interpretation and shading and so on. So I don't think that there's uh, information of that nature uh, being withheld or uh, papered over. Um, the, the political dynamics from the far right to the uh, uh, center left in the Israeli government uh, those things become fundamentally political and, and more delicate for a, a, an intelligence official to comment on. But the factual targeting issue, that would come up. Yossi, in this report, it also talks about what Iran is doing. It says that Iranian leaders they assessed did not have foreknowledge of the Hamas attack against Israel. It also talks about Iran's role in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Syria, in, in Yemen and the Red Sea. What I found interesting about that is it all comes in the report under the Gaza heading. And normally the U.S. administration tries to separate these and not admit they are causes of the Gaza war. And I think now there is a, there is a recognition that all, all these issues are connected. Now, they have sometimes their, their, their own causes. They won't disappear if they, they, the Israel-Palestine uh, conflict is resolved and there is peace. But at the same time, if the, 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 the issue is not resolved, as a result of it, it feeds into other conflicts. So, uh, you know, we heard it from Hassan Nasrallah. Uh, or even before, saying that, you know, he had no knowledge of uh, October 7 in, in, in advance, and it's a Palestinian issue, but at the same time, they will try to tie the Israel and the Israeli IDF as long as, 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 as possible. Iran is no doubt taking advantage by, and it plays its, its long game of through proxies in order to uh, to balance uh, Israel, it's, there is a battle of hegemony between Israel and, and Iran, and also to the, the United States. But I think it's important to see that un, not resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has wider implication in the region, and to be honest, well beyond. Glenn, in the report, there's also questions about the future of Netanyahu and his far-right government, saying his viability of his coal co coalition may be in jeopardy and there may be uh, elections and protests and com uh, coming. Now, that's, that's quite a political judgment, isn't it? Well, it's an assessment of a political issue. It's not taking sides in a, in a political uh, manner, however. But, but it's so, going to cause so political problems. It's, it's going to cause political problems, potentially, is it not? They're not going to like hearing that sure. in, 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 the, in the Netanyahu <laughs> camp. No, they will not. They will not. And, and I, I will also wager that already the Israeli uh, 
Netanyahu government is taking actions to uh, undermine the credibility of the people who may in the United States who who reach this assessment or the political figures who uh, agree with it or try to work with it. That's that's certain. Yeah, no, it's it's not a good thing for the Netanyahu government to hear, but it's a fact. I, I, it would seem to me. Uh, pretty clear from the millions of Israelis who have taken to the streets for years that Netanyahu um, is at best surviving uh, because of the the uh, support of the far right uh, only. That's it. Yossi, in terms of relations between Israel and the U.S., how damaging could this be given some of the comments we've had recently by President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu? If I may first to say, you know, you don't need the intelligence assessment uh, to, to realize that the viability of the Netanyahu government is dwindling. It's enough to read public opinion polls one after another, and that that's will suffice. As for, as, as for the relation with the United States, Netanyahu is an ongoing damage to this relation. It became a liability, and the way the war is conducted became a liability on these relations. When President Biden said it was recorded, uh, saying that you know there is it, it, there is a need for a come to Jesus conversation, uh, talk with 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 Netanyahu, is actually telling telling Israel that yes, they need a new leadership. The current leadership need to change track. There is a need for humanitarian aid to enter to enter uh, Gaza as soon as possible and in the quantities that. Uh, that can save Gazan people for humanitarian disaster. Tamak, if I could, if I could have a, a final word from you, um, the, do you be, be, begin to feel, as a Palestinian watching this, that the truth is finally being spoken by some Western leaders? For example, Joseph Borrell, uh, the foreign policy chief of the EU, said recently, "Starvation is being used as a weapon of war." We've known that for months. But he's only saying it now, just as this intelligence report is only coming out now. Briefly, please. Uh, gents, yeah, I mean, yes, but, but again, we need more actions. They need to use their leverage to change Israel's behavior. If you don't use leverage, if you don't use sanctions, if you don't use, I don't know, whatever you have on your menu to change the behavior of the Israeli government, then it's just talk. Palestinians need real actions. And I think everyone is fed up with We're tired from this conflict. It has gone for too long, and the Israelis cannot diminish or get rid of the Palestinians, and the other way around it goes also. So I think there is, I mean, with all the sacrifices, with all this bloodshed, this is, this, this conflict could be an opportunity to bring an internal peace for the two sides, if there is a real will. And I think the Americans still hold the card here, and they, they, they I mean, I mean, it's, it's their decision now. It's on their table now. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us today, Glenn Carl, Yossi Meckelberg and Tamar Kamut. Much more detail and context on Israel's war on Gaza can be found on our website, aljazeera.com. Inside Story is your spotlight on global issues. Where should we shine our spotlight next time? Let us know. Post on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Or message us on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, James Bays, and the team here in Doha, stay safe. I'll see you very soon.